sort of just going through and seeing where we're at now. I might put the water pump on now because it's only just this little front housing. Mm. So I'll put that on now and then I'll put the head on, belt on, time it up, we're good to go. Sometimes the holes are rusty and that makes them... Oh, right, and then the water can get through. Yeah, yeah okay. so I, I tend to just put a little bit of Celastic there to hold the seal in. Yeah. And then as you push it in like this, the glue sort of seeps out. Okay. And if you just run your finger around it like that, it puts just a fine film over the face. Yeah. And it just holds the seal in place and it actually stops if water gets like out of this hole to the back of that seal there where that groove is actually cut in the block like this section here it's if you yeah if you smooth some glue into that it's never going to rust now like so the next time this water pump comes off for service or a changeover that that o-ring groove is going to be that o-ring groove is going to be perfect perfect because man. it's all sealed beautiful yeah So what's the actual plan? You're still doing like a test fit now? Just yeah, yeah. Uh, just getting everything clean and ready to drop on. I'll lift the head gasket, hollow my right against the fence out there. And then uh, come in, drop the head gasket on, head on. These will align the head as it comes down. It'll locate on my dowels. And then uh, I'll put the, the head studs in where they need to go. And then go through the tall process of, Beautiful. you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, head gasket on, say goodbye. We haven't seen those pistons in a long time. Beautiful. Okay. Would it be all right if you didn't have polymer, like with a, with a metal gasket like this one? Would you be able to yes, you can run it without. Um, but there is a risk, there is a risk of leak, so I find it's just a, it's a safety, it's a safety thing. Yeah, Mainly like because of the turbo stuff that we do, if we do fucking have too much ignition timing or we have timing like fluctuation at high bursts, you can lift the cylinder head and the Hylomar is just a bit of a safety barrier, like you will just get less of a chance of it not living like you'll pressurize the coolant system and the hylomar can bite back down yeah it's after the head drops back down yeah it's sort of insurance yeah that's all it is it just helps a metal gasket seal because yeah. you're relying on the coating that they give you and sometimes it's just not enough yeah like yeah. the machining process that this has gone through with the head the deck face and the block face it's smooth enough just to run the gasket on dry no yeah. problem but i mean it's just extra insurance. It yeah. really is because it, it, whether or not it seals the, the compression, like the the crush rings around the cylinders, you've got an oil feed that runs through here. You've got oil drains all through the head. If one of those was to leak, you've just got a leak constantly. Yeah. So if you just put a bit of Hylomar, if it takes up that little nick mm. somewhere that might be there, yeah, it, it's just like I say, extra insurance. The 16 valves have a tendency to hit the uh, crank trigger. To the snout off the end of the gear there, yep. that can actually hit this stud. As the as the cast comes through, the gear will actually hit that, and you'll see guys try and tension the ten, tension the, uh, the dizzy in. You got it'll problems. actually it'll actually snap the arm off it where you bolt down onto because it'll hit it'll fail on that stud. So you've actually got to get a grinder and put a little chamfer on the end of that uh, yes. shaft. Yeah. Uh, yeah, to fix that because you'll uh, you'll end up with big fucking problems otherwise. It's nice when you can see the piston right at the spark plug hole, like <laughs> right at the top. Yeah, you can definitely see it. So there is. Uh, can you do me a favour? See that red, the red uh, grease there? Yeah. Show sure trick. When you're trying to put bolts, the nuts down in that, they just fall out. Yeah. So what I do is I just get a little bit of grease, line the inside of this socket. Like so, and that, that way when I put this inside that, she holds it. Yeah. Real stupid, like, sort of simple shit, but if you go like that and it goes down that fucking hole, yeah, it's in the it's sump. Like, yeah. yeah. There we go, that one's on. Nice and easy. Yeah, fuck it would go down there, eh? Yeah, shit. I've seen a 10 mil spanner go down there. That's the um, that's the breather that goes yeah, down Yeah, all the way to the block. Shit. I'll tell you a story, I was with Sprinter Man and he had his 10 mil spanner mangled up on his wall. And I said, what's with the go with that spanner? And he goes, customer engine came in, it was locked up, brand new engine. Guy built it, 
for a guy, for an, another guy. It uh, started it, um, and it locked up instantly. And he goes, I'm not going to even fuck with this and take it back to the original guy who built it. I'm going to take it to Sprinter Man. Sprinter Man's fucking pulled the sump off, and he's seen this fucking thing mangled up in the crankshaft between everything. It turned out to be a 10 mil spanner. Old mate was working on it. And as he was fucking working away, he's dropped the fucking 10 mil spanner. It's gone down there. This is a 12 mil, so it don't fit. But the 10 mil spanner has gone all the way down and wound itself up in the crank when he cranked it over. Shit. So he's working on it, dropped the spanner and just gone, where my spanner go? Fuck it. And just let it go. All the way down. It's crazy. Those breathers, there's like, it's like two, it's like two ports there too. Like, I remember when Yeah, the, channels over, but that's because yeah. of this. If you look here, there's a, is there a exhaust bolt. Oh, right. Okay. So that goes through. But I've ported all that out, so it's a bit, it flows a bit freer. But that's your breather. The only other drains you've got in this, the 16 valve forays are two on this side. And then that's why on the small ports they put this rear head drain on this back corner. Just to get rid of To get the oil out of the head. Yeah. yeah. So the small port was a far superior head. Did the big port not have that drain, that rear drain? No, it doesn't, no. 20 so valves don't have it either. But I actually have a, a jig where I actually drill into the back of the 20 valve cylinder head, bore in a fitting, and I run a fitting down to the drain port on a 20 valve where they don't have it, but it's cast into the block. Okay. So I drill and tap the block for the head drain down here. And then I run a twenty. I run a ninety degree uh, dash ten, and then that goes down to that goes down to the uh, the drain. So it, uh, it it helps the twenty valve not have as many issues. I have no issues with my twenty valve with uh, breathing or with um, oil drain down issues. So now please fix the bolts. How I said one's normally you get one's too long and it fails on that. Yeah. This stud here is short. Right, so you swap one over. So after tensioning it down, yeah. Just you get in? No, very good. So they've actually fixed the kit, that's good. This must be a more modern kit. Because the studs that you used to get back in the day, mate, they were terrible. Try and do this in one swoop so you angle you put yourself in a position where you can just get it in one go. So it moves then. Because if you stop, it'll bind and you'll never get the full tension out of it. So if I stop halfway through that turn, I'll go to go again and it'll click. Yeah, well, So it's a false reading yeah. of tension. So you have to do it in one swift movement. The, the restriction of 60 foot pounds of torque is done when the actual bolt stretches to 60 pounds, not when the, when the friction binds it, binds up. So you want to do it in one movement and don't be impeded, because if I have to stop for whatever reason, it binds and you're going to get that wrong tension. Yeah. So you'll see me put myself in a funny position just to get it right. To get it right, yeah. yeah. So there's nothing impeding me. Like if my elbow hit this and I fucking went, oh shit, click, click, click. Yeah, I yeah. went to go again. It's going to be at 55, not 60. So now that's tensioned down, we'll let this sit for 20 minutes or so. And um, we'll come back, double check them, run yep. 60 over them again. It should just click, 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 click. If one of them moves, we know we've got an issue. Maybe a thread in the blocks would be funny. I don't expect that, being a virgin 7A block. And uh, yeah, we'll go through the process of cams in in time, front cover plates, pulleys, belts, time it all up, cycle it over. She should make some compression. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the, the little the little things like that, fuck mate, save ya. Just a little bit of grease in the fucking socket, mate. Yeah. If that fucking that fell down, down. <laughs> oh my god. Because it's, it's not bigger <laughs> than your hole in the sump, you know, yeah. the, dr the drain hole. Yeah. So you're not getting it out. You've got to spin the motor upside down. There we go, another one. Maybe three degrees. Maybe one degree. Like one. So like how much how much would it have to move before you went, okay? Ten or fifteen. Yeah. I got like five degrees out of the, the worst there. So that's perfect. That's good. So you just put a little bit of this uh, five one five, which is a flange sealant. So because these are mounted like flat on the machine as a machine surface, you use a 515, which is for really tight tolerances. 
and you do it just on the outside of this cap here there and there along these surfaces here and then that as that goes on it seals just there because if you don't do it it can track underneath the gasket just through here I'll show you with a pointer it can actually track just along here under the cap because as I said the gasket starts here as it goes over the cap and if the oil can come up through here it can track along there just there and out the front and weep down so people think it's a camshaft seals and there's nothing wrong with them brand new camshaft seals and they fucking leak and everyone wonders why uh, with these I tend not to use uh, an oil sorry uh, an assembly lube on the seals because if you use an assembly lube on the seals uh, it, it sort of as it gets hot in there it uh, turns like almost like a grease really what you want is a lightweight oil a lightweight engine oil on the inside of the seal just to lubricate it for when it starts up keep the outside of the seal nice and dry because these seals are getting old even though they're new they're old if that makes sense they weren't made in 12 last 12 months these were made in the 80s and yeah. they sat around they're quite dry and fucking hard so you try and keep them lubricated that's clean here clean there with brake cleaner as this cap gets fitted down you'll see the tracked area just beneath the cap so if your gasket goes up and over like that what's stopping the oil going from there between the cap face and out the front so if we do this this will stop our oil leaks now it's fine some people will say oh you can't take the fucking caps off when the cams tension down yes you can because this cam here and this cam here are on lift this cam here has no lift so there's no tension on the cam in front so if you take this cap off it's not going to snap the cam some people freak out but it's uh not a problem now see how we've got a bit of oil seepage there that's what we're trying to see we want to see it come out the front like that and that because that's where it's going to leak Yeah, I'm sure plenty of people have had that problem before, eh? Heaps. So guys, guys will have fucking oil leaks down the front of their motors, and they wonder why. A lot of people just accept that 4 A's leak. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's what I've heard plenty of people say it. Yeah. So. And, and again, this is like, and, and some people say fucking, you know, it's not right. But look here, these, these here are the oil drains. So behind the rear, the front main seal, the oil has to escape through that drain there and that drain there. So as long as you're not on the inside and you're just on the outside of that, I mean, that's too much. So I'll just move some of that off up here. That's how the oil drains down. And you've also got an oil drain hole there in the bottom. So you don't want to block that either. I've also seen that blocked up with fucking Celastic before. Okay. So you don't want to do that. So you get this clean. Yeah, so the idea is any oil that does get in there, it has some. Uh, yeah, exactly. Because if it pull, and it will pull up in here, it will yeah. pull. And if you can get rid of that oil pooling, okay, obviously so you can drill that hole out bigger and all that sort of stuff. But if you don't, and you actually seal these edges, it won't actually leak between the cap and come out the front. Yep. These will all come out and get lock tighter, but I'm just going to fit them first, tighten them all down. How important would you say the lock tight is on them? Very. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get your entry tension up. Well, we've got a bit of belt adju adjustment there. Like we've got heaps in it. As long as, we set the, as long as we set the timing up right, it's fine. Just this trial fit, I'm gonna lock tight them. So don't, don't stress. <laughs> That's much better, I like that a lot more. And that's sitting right in the middle. So I will keep it there. I will lock tight these in. This is how I will run it. But I will set that back to zero. And having all that advance in it, that's probably not a bad thing. I'll have to cycle it over twice to get an idea of what it's doing. Yep. Because um, unless you cycle it over twice, it won't actually take up the belt and uh, the slack in the belt all over. I think it looks he's better like that too. Even like, just, you know, you're, you're liking the tension on the belt, but I think it just, yeah. it looks nicer just sitting that way. It, uh, well, it, it's better for the belt anyway. The more purchase you can get around the belt on this gear, 
um, you're going to have less belt, uh, belt deflection, yeah. so it's going to be better anyway. So that's good, man. It's tight, man. That's really nice. That's really nice. If I get 220 pounds of cylinder pressure, I know this thing's going to make in the 800, 180 horsepower. 180 horsepower? There's some big numbers, Matt. I can tell you guys at home that the engine ended up making an awful lot more than 220 psi cylinder pressure. Let me know how much horsepower you guys think this engine is going to make in the comments section. We'll be tuning the car on a hub dyno, so any figures that we're talking about will be at the hubs. And I'll have a full spec list in the description. And if you like the video, be sure to hit that thumbs up, subscribe, and hit that notification bell if you'd like to see part four of this engine build. Thanks guys. Thank you.